Hi, thank you for tuning in. My name is Liu Lim. I'm the founder and CEO of VLight. In this presentation, I hope to show you some really exciting developments in the world of brain stimulation in the way that we do it. And particularly for meditators, uh, long-term meditators and how your experience can be enhanced instantly. So we're talking about quite profound um, uh, experience here, like, you know, an altered state. So let's move on. This is uh, one of our devices. And for this particular device, the V-Lite Neuro, it comes in a couple of versions that are available out there right now. One version pulses at 10 hertz, which is alpha, and another at 40 hertz. Both have been used for meditation, and we've got some really interesting um, feedback from long-term meditators, even you know, a uh, be beginner stage uh, novice meditator with the alpha, how it how they experience some uh, enhancements in their in their experience, as we put it. But 40 hertz of gamma uh, was interesting for more advanced meditators in that it is at high frequency like that it is associated with the more advanced meditators so let's uh and i'll talk about this a little bit later and let's just move on and now what's so special about you know what we do delivering basically near infrared light to the brain in a controlled manner uh, in a safe manner and yet give you the experience. Now the difference between this and other forms of brain stimulation like electrical and magnetic is the biological process because it involves um, the changes in your proteins in gene transcript transcription. So apart from modulating the brain oscillation, for example, it does actually have an effect for the longer term because it helps your body, your tissues to be generally better. So um, here is a set of processes from photobiomodulation to the brain. And let's start from uh, one of the circles here on the slides on uh, on the top, say, you know, the uh, increased synaptogenesis. So this is about increasing um, the generation of new synapses when you direct um, near infrared light. And what it means that it improves in your brain signaling. Then you have angiogenesis. And mind you, these, these are uh, out of past research, so it, it wasn't something like you plug out of the air and say this is going to happen. So they're based on cell research and based on animal studies. So angiogenesis, um, evidence have found that photobiomodulation can help generate blood vessels. And of course, it can improve the blood flow and the blood circulation. There's pretty good discussion on anti-inflammation. -inf we are using one of our models at the moment actually in a COVID-19 trial because based on past scientific reports, we believe that the way we do it, um, you know, inhibiting, inhibiting coronavirus at the nose before it goes in, if it, does, if it goes into your lung to the lower respiratory tract, it, uh, another module on your chest uh, where the, the sternum, the thymus is to generate T cells to help fight the viruses and uh, perhaps even to uh, control the inflammation that has been associated with this deadly disease. So that is uh, an aside and um, the, one of the processes that can happen is anti-apoptosis, which is the control of cell death. Apoptosis is cell death. So that is control, but you, uh, you're not going to you know, go beyond what your body naturally needs to do with, with this regards. Then increases uh, 
neuron progenitor cells, progenitor stem cells for a specific purpose in this case uh, in the development of neurons. So there is, um, you know, the generation of neurons here, uh, it can increase SOD, which is superoxide dismutase. It is um, an enzyme that controls uh, free radicals. It helps to neutralize free radicals. And it increases neurotrophins like, um, as you see, BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factors. It helps um, with the uh, re uh, regeneration of brain cells. Uh, the, it helps with uh, growth-derived neurotrophic factors, the uh, neuronal growth factors. So, so there is this um, the um, helping of the release of chemicals to help to you know help in the regrowth and restoration of cells and there's a lot we can talk about here you know in traumatic brain injury and stroke but it's not within the scope of this presentation here then uh, it controls the neurotoxicity in the brain because every time your brain does an activity there is the byproducts that are toxic to your brain and and uh, photobiomodulation can help with the clearance of of uh, and reduction of this toxicity now so that's biological seems like long term uh, what happens in the short term well an interesting study was published recently this year in 2020 when um, they investigated a number of subjects with a photobiomodulation, a laser device on the forehead, and put into a MRI scanning equipment, this big um, magnetic resonance imaging equipment to image what's happening in the brain. So um, it was meant to be a 25 minute you know, investigation for each subject. So after five minutes, they turn on this laser and and see what happens. And then it turn they turn off another ten minutes later. So if you look at the chart on the bottom left, they are seeing response in the brain uh, within a minute, one minute, and. Uh, you know, at three different echoes. So, so the brain is responding significantly. Then at the top right, you see images pre and post where they image the brain, uh, the whole brain before they put it uh, illuminated and then uh, image it after and found that actually there is significant increase in the blood oxygenation level throughout the whole brain generally. So it has a whole brain wide effect. And the, the, the really good thing for me is that the effects are non-thermal. And what do I mean? Well, you can, you know, a number of years ago, there's this kind of accepted um, Tolerance by the regulators that maybe, uh, you know, this this kind of therapy increases the blood. It may have a thermal effect, and uh, you know, improves the blood circulation. You feel better and so on. But it actually, photobiomodulation is non-thermal. You don't do not want heat. You just want the effect of the photons on your cells. And that is pure photobiomodulation. And that is what you, you want. And this particularly, this particular experiment is demonstrating that. Now, what if you introduce oscillations, changing the brain wave, you know, um, inducing, say you want to induce alpha by, with 10 hertz and you want to induce gamma as I, I mentioned that we, our device um, have been shown to be able to do. Uh, we published this in, uh, in, uh, 
I think early spring last year, 2019. And this is a summary slide uh, of what we found. Now, very consistently across the board on, on subjects who were using the active device. So we had a, a blinded study where we have in uh, those who are active, those who are on sham, we measure before and after. And with the sham device, nothing had seemed to be happening. Uh, you can see that on the green line, right across the different frequencies. And on the active device, there it was clear increased in the the amplitude or the power of the fast frequency alpha, beta, gamma. So we got increasing in gamma as well as alpha and beta. But what we did not, uh, well, we went in, went in with an open mind and uh, we were surprised and, and happy to see that, you know, it affected the slow waves differently. So it was not like everything went up right across the board, right? So delta and theta were actually lower as the result of this treatment. It has a lot of implications. It has implications for, um, you know, for problems like inattention, where the person is kind of locked into the slow waves. It has implications for consolidation, um, encoding of memory, uh, mental performance, and so on. But we're here to talk about meditation and high frequencies. So we wanted to see what other things can happen with um, changing the mod, you know, this um, the parameters. And now what we found, and I will dwell on that later, I touched on that, that um, advanced meditators walk around with g gamma. There is gamma in the brain and uh, uh, long-term meditators are different from somebody like me who does not meditate and, uh, and long-term meditators are able to get into the state immediately and they, they, they are really, uh, to me, they're walking superhumans, <laughs> which means that they are able to get into a bliss state easily. Now we want to see what if we play around with these different frequencies and found that actually the, the meditators, long-term meditators have particularly have a window where it could be a higher frequency, 200 Hertz, maybe higher where once they get induced with this, they immediately do get into an altered state. Now that's very interesting, but we want to know you want to know what also would happen uh, for other people. What if we uh, only stimulate specific areas? What if we, if two areas are kind of locked in, how can we free that by, you know, uh, uh, delivering the, the pulsing signals out of phase to break it up or to strengthen it to be in phase? Um, what if we change the power? What if we only affect certain networks, say the salient network, as opposed to the default mode network? So lots of interesting thing. I think uh, based on what we know so far is going to be very exciting. Now that device is going to be out hopefully this winter, this month is September. We're hoping to see maybe uh, around Christmas. So we'll see what happens. We're doing beta testing right now. So um, so you want to make sure that this is a safe device. It's going to be, this is going to be one of the most sophisticated, sophisticated um, brain stimulation device. And I'll show you, this is an architecture of the graphic user interface. And, uh, and there's a, so this is only part of it. You know, you can, 
uh, you can adjust so many things and play around with so many things. But but the the, the beauty is we want to develop a professional community or a community of educated users so that information can be, be shared. We can learn from each other. Um, so what we're doing is providing a tool. We're going to do further experiments. Other people want to do it. Uh, as a user, your data is going to be, uh, there'll be a platform for you to upload it to a server, a remote server through the cloud. Um, you can download the um, improvements on your hard, on the the app on your phone. Um, when we make improvements on hardware, it will be available to you. Uh, we will learn from each other. And I think the beautiful thing part about this is we are all on a journey together to of discovery to see what is possible with the brain. And ultimately, I think what is most rewarding out of this is going to be how helpful this is going to be for to help people in general, you know, uh, to help humanity. And uh, uh, a meditation study is going to start soon. And uh, I talked briefly about, uh, you know, inducing different pulse frequencies and see what windows the advanced meditators are going to hit and experience. So this is the contact information in information. Sanjay is the main investigator here. His contact information is here. And we hope to start when the you know lockdown is is eased off. So I think it's it may be a good time if you want to learn more, just send an email to Sanjay. And I want to introduce Sanjay in a different way. Now he he actually made a presentation about a couple of years ago with a prototype neuro pro and to share his experience on what happens with advanced meditators who goes into a different different state i'm not able to show this earlier because the technology does not allow me to continue with the presentation after this um after this video so uh, this will be my last slide now of course we are more interested in meditation not just in health benefits and so there are many studies that show that meditators have increased gamma at rest compared to non-meditators not only that many meditations show high gamma activity in several areas of the cortex when the when the when the meditation is happening. And, but this gamma activity is not limited to around 40 hertz. It's actually can be anywhere in the range of 40 to 200 hertz. So we wanted, we asked the question, what if we were to able to induce this kind of gamma activity in the brain somehow? Now I'm also a neurofeedback practitioner. I've been doing neurofeedback for many years. And basically we haven't done gamma neurofeedback. Even tried it recently. It's very difficult to do. Firstly, people didn't think about gamma till recently. Secondly, it's very difficult to do because that signal is hard to detect from the brain. It really attenuates through the brain and it's, uh, there's a lot of muscle artifact. You can't really do it properly. So then we thought, what if you were to use the V light helmet to induce high levels of high frequency gamma in the brain? Then what would happen? So, we had V light make an experimental unit for us that we could flash at any frequency we like. And so the first unit they gave us could go up to 200 hertz. And we started to experiment with this. And I tried it on myself. And it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. So, so I noticed that an immediate deepening of my PNSC state and an increase in sensory clarity, increase in joy, and increase in a deep calm. And this stayed for a long time. It's almost, for me, it's almost put me over the edge, caused some kind of permanent shift and deepening. So I was excited to have other people try it. So here we have Chula Dasa. So Jay referred to him as the author of The Mind Illuminated, a meditation teacher, trying it. And we had him 
We started low at a low frequency of stimulation around one hertz and went up slowly and had him uh, talk about his experience at various frequencies, especially at multiples of 40, such as 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 160 hertz, and 200 hertz. And he reported that uh, at 200 hertz, he, he felt that it helped him to have easy access to the highest levels in his system, which is level 9 and 10, which Jay talked about. And and so he thought, oh, that's interesting. We'll have other people try it. And other people started to report, other long-term meditators are the most people we've tried that with. And they report something similar. Here's Shinzen trying this recently. And Shinzen reported increased feelings of vibratory flow, uh, deep calm, a no thought state, and then woke up having more energy to function. All right. So this is it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, remember, if you want to learn more, uh, the context were in the earlier slides. Um, particular this, particularly this meditation study for advanced meditator. Now, so of course, we are more interested in meditation, not just in health slide. benefits. Well, thank you for and listening. So and so uh, there are many studies that in. show that meditators have increased gamma at rest compared to non-meditators. Not only that, many meditations show high gamma activity in several areas of the cortex when the, when the, when the meditation is happening. And, but this gamma activity is not limited to around 40 hertz. It actually can be anywhere in the range of 40 to 200 hertz. So we, wanted, we asked the question, what if we were to able to induce this kind of gamma activity in the brain somehow? Now, I'm also a neurofeedback practitioner. I've been doing neurofeedback for many years. And basically, we haven't done gamma neurofeedback even tried it recently. It's very difficult to do. Firstly, people didn't think about gamma till recently. Secondly, it's very difficult to do because that signal is hard to detect from the brain. It really attenuates through the brain and it's, uh, there's a lot of muscle artifact. You can't really do it properly. So then we thought, what if we were to use the V-Lite helmet to induce high levels of high frequency gamma in the brain? Then what would happen? So, we had V-Light make an experimental unit for us that we could flash at any frequency we like. And so the first unit they gave us could go up to 200 hertz. And we started to experiment with this. And I tried it on myself. And it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty amazing. So, so I noticed that an immediate deepening of my PNSE state and an increase in sensory clarity, increase in joy, and increase in a deep calm. And this stayed for a long time. It's almost, for me, it's almost put me over the edge, caused some kind of permanent shift and deepening. So I was excited to have other people try it. So here we have Chula Dasa. So Jay referred to him as the author of The Mind Illuminated, the meditation teacher, trying it. And we had him we started low at a low frequency of stimulation around one hertz and went up slowly and had him uh, talk about his experience at various frequencies, especially at multiples of 40, such as 80 hertz, 120 hertz, 160 hertz, and 200 hertz. And he reported that uh, at 200 hertz, he, he felt that it helped him to have easy access to the highest levels in his system, which is level 9 and 10, which Jay talked about. And and so he said, oh, that's interesting. We'll have other people try it. And other people started to report, other long-term meditators are the most people we've tried that with. And they report something similar. Here's Shinzen trying this recently. And Shinzen reported increased feelings of vibratory flow, uh, a deep calm, a no thought state, and then woke up having more energy to function. 